And I thought I'd show you a very quick demonstration just before it disappears of a historic and very vintage way of making sulfur chloride. Uh, as you can see here, they are generating chlorine in Florin's flask, and then here uh, we can see a wolf bottle uh, and then a retort. Now, it's taken me quite some time to set up a very, very similar setup. I've got a wolf bottle here with um, some concentrated sulfuric acid in it to um, dry the chlorine, and then we've got some potassium permanganate in the Florin's flask here. Uh, with an old-fashioned thistle funnel and then we're adding concentrated hydrochloric acid to it. What's happening is that the concentrated hydrochloric acid is reacting with the potassium permanganate, it's being, becoming oxidized and then it's filling this flask, this um, wolf bottle, which actually has a safety tube on it to it. And obviously it's pointing away from me just in case the pressure would be too much and you can see the yellow colour of chlorine gas here. And then in this old fashioned retort, we have some uh, sulfur, which was just some uh, flowers of sulfur which I ground up. Uh, and there's got a small Boston flame onto it to melt it. And then as it slowly distills, we get sulfur monochloride here. It's not the most efficient way, but I thought it would be a very interesting uh, little experiment to set up. Um, just actually drilling the corks themselves with uh, a cork borer and bending the glass, uh, it took about maybe an hour, believe it or not, in and of itself. And you can see why, for instance, uh, I'm going to use a much quicker setup using good old modern quick fit glassware uh, whenever I demonstrate that uh, in the fume cupboard next time whenever we do the same experiment. But I thought it'd be just fun to, to show you some antique equipment. This is a, a certainly 1920s Florence flask. Uh, we're using something a bit older here, which is uh, a wolf bottle with three necks and also um, we've got a, a very, very old-fashioned retort with a cork in it. Of course, sulfur chloride does attack cork and rubber is also attacked by chlorine, so don't expect them to last too long. But we do have about maybe about five or six mils um, after running this experiment. Let me just add for us some concentrated hydrochloric acid. We begin to bubble up. You can see why we don't use thistle funnels any longer. But we do get a good evolution of chlorine. I'll just stick the fume head down. Years ago, this would have been expected to be done on a open laboratory in a school. I'm sure everyone was very nauseous and uh, had their lungs well cleared out uh, from the chlorine and sulfur monochloride after the end of the experiment. So we'll be repeating this same experiment but using slightly more modern equipment which I'm sure will be a lot more efficient uh, and certainly won't uh, allow wastage of reagents by maybe bubbling them up or losing chlorine gas as I'm sure we have through the corks of which I've used a paraffin wax also just to make sure they're sealed in. So we'll maybe do um, a very quick experiment with that sulfur monochloride later on in the future.